Hey, 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 what is going on guys? This is Jason with Jadron Aquatics Farm and Ranch. We are back again. I know you guys are shocked. You figured I'd go into the six months before I make another video, but no. I told you, I'm fired up. I'm excited about community again. And today, we're going to discuss the first uh, livestock, I don't know what you want to call it, that we got. The very first thing that we have now, and we've actually had for a little while, so I know a lot about them now, are guineas. No, not, not the little hamster looking guineas. Guinea fowl, which are kind of like, uh, sort of like a chicken. So let's go ahead and let, let's find them, and I'm going to tell you a little about them as you watch uh, the insanity that is the guinea fowl. All right, here we are with a few of our guineas. We got two here and we got two over there. So we're gonna follow these guys around and, and you can watch them as they chase grasshoppers and uh, probably make a lot of noise because they like to make a lot of noise. So let's talk about the first reason. Why in the world did I decide to get guineas? Why didn't I get chickens instead? You would think that would be the first thing that most people would want to get is a uh, chicken. But no, we decided to get guineas. And the reason that we did decide to get guineas is because of the fact that uh, they, they're they like perfect insect control. One of their favorite things to actually eat is ticks. So if you've got ticks, which we do out here, deer ticks that get on the cows and stuff, um, these guys will actually just obliterate uh, ticks. Uh, they especially, they love grasshoppers. So my wife and my daughter-in-law really love them because uh, they always take care of the, uh, the grasshoppers. So how do we end up getting these guys? Well, if you guys know me, whenever I get into something, I always do a, a, a ton of research on it so I know exactly what I'm getting into, what their, uh, their habitat needs to be, how you feed them, how you take care of them. Well, that's not exactly what happened with these guys. I did about half the research, so I knew that I wanted guineas, but... I wasn't prepared for them yet because I didn't have a building or anything uh, for them to stay in. But one day we were at Tractor Supply and they had 22 guineas and they were on half off. So they, they were like $3 or something. And of course everyone saw them because man, when these things are babies, they are cute as can be. And as you can see, as they get older, uh, they get very, very ugly. <laughs> they, they have like a turkey head to them. Uh, as you can see and so oh here we got some more so we've got we've got six around us right now and so uh, they're like let's take them let's take them home right now and I'm like no we absolutely not we cannot take them home right now because when you get these things as babies you've got to uh, keep them in an area that's about 95 degrees for a, a couple of weeks and then uh, you begin to uh, uh, let go of about five degrees of temperature every uh, few weeks until they're about six or eight weeks old and then you can uh, let them out uh, to roam. So we went home and everyone was sad because we didn't come home with the guineas. And obviously I was excited about the fact that they were half off. So I went home, did a ton of research and realized, okay, I think by the, when I get these things, I'm gonna have to keep them in, uh, in, in a heated small area for a while and so that will that'll give me probably five to six weeks to get the building finished because right right here this is the building that they actually live in but when we first got here this is a very very old building this entire top was gone completely gone so I had to totally redo uh, the roof so that took a, a long time but this forced me into do it so we went and we brought home uh, all the guineas, we've got, look at we've got eight of them here now. Very rarely do they all get here uh, together. So we, uh, there you can see one of them asserting their dominance. They're very, they're being very, very quiet right now. So that's something to know about whenever you get guineas is uh, people used to say to me when I was reading and learning about it first, they were talking about these things are very loud and very obnoxious. And for the first probably two or three months, these guys didn't make a ton of noise. Um, they kind of made, like you'll hear every once in a while, a little bit of sound here and there, but they they weren't terribly obnoxious, and then all of a sudden, uh, they get their voices. And for the most part, they make a lot of noise a lot of times. So it, it's, kind of, it's kind of shocking me right now that they're so quiet. It might be because I'm kind of close. Um, 
So just know that when you get these things, uh, they are they can be extremely, uh, extremely loud. Okay, so another reason I wanted to get these guys is I wanted to get them for the eggs. Um, these guys don't exactly lay eggs like chickens, but their eggs they lay, uh, they're a little bit smaller than chickens, but they pretty much taste, because I've eaten them multiple times, they taste just like chicken eggs. Uh, but these guys typically don't start laying eggs until they're about 12 or 16 weeks old, and they won't start laying until about March. Uh, so these guys don't typically lay any uh, during the winter. So uh, you've got a long period of time that they don't lay eggs at all, whereas chicken lay eggs like almost every single day. Um, a female guinea will lay about 100 uh, eggs a year, and sometimes she'll lay a bunch of eggs at one single time. And occasionally I found them where you'll have multiple females that'll lay eggs all in the same spot. And then you'll have one that will try to actually uh, raise them up. Now something that you need to know about guineas, these things are stupid. Like, I mean, stupid, stupid. Like, I, I, I can't even begin to express to you how dumb these things are. Like, people, a lot of people raise these for meat. Like, I can't really kill a pet like I, unless I just had to. But if there was ever a bird that would be easy to do that to, it would be these things. And that sounds horrible, I know, but man, these things, they're, they're just so dumb. And when I say they're dumb, um, so um, they'll go, uh, so you'll see around uh, the compound where we live in, that we've got a fence that goes around. We're probably somewhere in seven or eight acres inside the fenced area, which is to keep cows out and to keep the wild hogs out. And so you see these guys could just take off and fly over there. I mean, these things are fantastic flyers, but they're too stupid to know that they can fly or when to fly. And so instead of just taking off and flying across the fence, they don't. They actually will, they, they cross the cattle guard. And so let me, let me show you a, a quick video of them in action actually crossing the cattle guard. Uh, like I told you guys before, the uh, the guineas have the ability to fly, but instead instead of actually flying, they use the cattle guard to cross. Look at here, wings to fly, and they use the cattle guard to cross. All right, so you see, um, one of them literally just walked across the cattle guard, and the other one kind of flew. And so they, cho they choose to run. They just want to run all the time. They almost never want to fly. About the only time they ever fly is when they get spooked. Uh, if I let one of my dogs out here, my dogs don't try to hurt them, but my dogs like to play with them. And so they'll take off running after them sometimes, and they'll take off flying, and sometimes they'll take off and fly um, way outside of the fence. But another thing they do a really good job on is uh, they take care of any of the snakes that get inside the area. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but you can see videos where these guys will work together as a group to actually uh, kill a snake or at least drive a snake outside the fence. Um, we've seen one rattlesnake inside the, the area, but that was actually at night. My son was walking back from the shop and almost stepped on him. Uh, so that wasn't the guinea's fault. The guinea automatically went to sleep. So um, when it starts getting dark at night, these guys will automatically go back into uh, the place where I have them sleeping at that I showed you earlier. And uh, a lot of people say that's one of the most difficult things to do, but for somehow, I don't know, it was really, I put mine out here in it and I've never had any problem whatsoever getting them to, uh, to go back inside. They automatically do it at night. Um, the problem that I've had with that is I tried to put an automatic door. Let, let, me, let me show you the, the automatic door that I'm talking about. So this building, this building has this small door that I had to put in. So it's got this automatic door that you can set to come open up whenever the uh, sun comes up. But they, they will not go through that little thing. So the only door these guys ever use is this, these, these big doors that I have right here. So they go in and out of these big doors. So when I try to keep this shut and try to force them into the small one, what they do is they, they're too stupid to realize it. So instead, they fly up here on top of the building and they sleep on top of the building all night. 
They've done it four or five times. So I've totally given up on trying to get them to go um, through that door because the plan, because this thing is big enough, is I wanted to section it off where I had guineas on one side and then I had ducks on the other side. But I've completely given up on that because uh, these things are too stupid to uh, get them to do anything that you want them to do. So totally given up on that idea. So now I'm gonna to have to work on building a duck house. Uh, that's part of what you see right here. This is going to be the little pond for the ducks to be able to swim around in. Uh, these aren't like ducks that like live in the water all the time. Um, so they just need like a little bit of water to play in each and every day, but they don't like, they're not like go out and swim all the time. And plus the guineas will be able to use it for water, but that's, that's a, a work in progress and that's what all these poles and stuff are the other thing about the guineas is is uh we we let them uh free roam everywhere um because you pretty much have to if you try to keep guineas contained um it, it'll just stress them out these guys want to go out and they want to do their thing as you can see they're not really scared of me but they also aren't going to let me touch them because they're they're even they kind of know who i am but you can see they don't want me to get very close to them now, they're not gonna do anything. They're, they're, they don't attack or anything like that, but they just, uh, oh, look, there's one after a grasshopper over there. As you can see, one after, oh, 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 oh. Poor thing, the one was going after it, and then when he went after it, the other one started coming after him and it scared him, and so he ran over here. And so uh, these guys free range all over the place. And so that works fantastically because they typically go outside of the area uh, almost every single day and they will go sometimes 30, 40 yards in every single uh, direction. And so they kind of take care of the outside of the area. Now the bad part about that is, is I've lost uh, more guineas than I care to uh, admit. Um, and we're not 100% sure. Um, we found two or three guineas that were dead that weren't even eaten, so I don't know how they got killed. Um, and one day we had a bunch of hawks out here. So it might be the hawks that are actually killing them. Uh, we're not totally sure. Um, the guineas were outside the fence area one time, and my son said he saw a, uh, a coyote chasing them in the middle of the day. And so maybe a coyotes have gotten a few of them. And so we started out with 22 guineas, and we're down to nine now. Yeah, I know nine, um, but again, these guys—they've got to—you got to let them go out and, and do what they want to do, or uh, again, they're just going to absolutely lose their mind. Um, there's just—it'd be almost impossible to keep these things if you had neighbors, because they are going to go into your neighbor's place. I mean, you're, there's just absolutely no way uh, to keep them from it. So right now, what I'm actually working on—we had a guinea that we found that was out there uh, laying. And again, not being very smart, she could have laid inside the compound here, but instead she laid outside the fence in like some of this high grass area. And whenever they lay eggs, it takes about 28 days for the eggs to hatch. And she set on them for probably 14 days. And one of the times she got up, I pulled, cause she had, she had almost 30 eggs in there. I pulled 12 eggs out and I, I have them in an incubator right now and I let her try to hatch the other ones out. But I thought to myself, there's no possible way it's ever going to survive that long. And sure enough, um, on day, I don't know, 14, 15 or something like that, I went out there and all the eggs had been crushed. My assumption is the wild hogs ran or something and just stepped all over them because the eggs weren't eaten. So that, that's the next thing we're working on right now is we're gonna try to uh, start taking the eggs and maybe eating less of them and trying to incubate them more so that I can try to build up the, the population uh, once again. It, it is a little bit aggravating to know that I'm building up the population so that something can go off and, and kill them again. But at this point, we don't know exactly what to do. Um, they say you can put up uh, uh, like fake owls, maybe like on, on the corners of everything, or you can put up, hang up like old CDs that create uh, uh, reflections and stuff. And that way when the hawks are over, it kind of scares the hawks. But again, we're not 100% sure uh, it's the hawks. And there's just no way to prevent against the coyotes if, they're, if these things are gonna go outside. So uh, it's, just, it's just one of the things that you gotta live with. When you're living in the country, 
and you want to get yourself some gorgeous, gorgeous guineas. So thanks again, guys, and God bless.